before I jump straight in, I want to say thank you to Pastor Joe for allowing me to be up here today. Um, it's a big honor to be here. It's a big responsibility, and I don't take it lightly. So thank you to him for trusting me to be up here this morning. And we're continuing our series, I Am Christian Center. I got three amens. We are continuing our series today, I Am Christian Center. There we go. That's a little better. I don't know if y'all still got that. Everybody say it with me. I am Christian Center. All right. That's it. Man, y'all sound good. Keep talking back. You sound good this morning. It's good. I like it. This is a series about the values and the culture of our church. You understand that we are not the church down the road. We are not a church up the street or in another town. We are Christian Center. God did not call us to be like anybody else. He called us and orchestrated us to be who we are. And that's what we're supposed to do. And this series is designed to help us each understand exactly the cultures, the culture and the values of Christian Center. And you guys know if you haven't been here, today's your first day. Welcome to Christian Center. You're part of Christian Center. You are a Christian Center. We have these shirts that a lot of us are wearing. They're for you. They are free. Free 99, we'd like to say. Free 99. Um, if it's your first day at Christian Center, please stop by the table and grab a shirt. We want you to have one. If it's your 17th day at Christian Center, stop by the table and grab one. They are free. These shirts are provided by your generosity. Your tithing, your offering, your giving are providing these shirts for each of us. So take one, please. We want you to. It helps us identify with this series, I Am Christian Center. It's a great reminder when you're walking through a store and you see a mirror, oh yeah, I'm a Christian Center. I got to be cautious of what I say and what I do. The last couple weeks, Pastor has talked us, walked us through this series of I Am Christian Center. We discussed our vision statement, what we do. Why do, why, why do we do? Transforming lives with the love of Christ. How do we do that? You hear us say it all the time. We get to serve. We are able to transform lives with the love of Christ when we get to serve because we get to serve. Our vision statement is really the heart of this house. It is. It's how we do things. It's our heartbeat. Everything that we do at Christian Center flows out of our vision of transforming lives with the love of Christ. That's why, that's our why and our how, we get to serve. Now I realize some of you are sitting there and go, you just told us the same thing three times. You're right, because we want you to understand and grasp hold of what we believe. We transform lives with the love of Christ when we get to serve. Why do you keep telling us? Because we get it. We want to make sure we all get it. So we're all on the same page. People ask you, hey, what does your church believe? You know what? We believe in transforming lives with the love of Christ when we serve. Boom. Simple. So you're going to hear it a lot. Why? Because we want you to know without a doubt who Christian Center is. See, when you and I say, I'm Christian Center, we're making a public declaration that we align our beliefs with our vision and mission. And we're partnering with Christian Center, we're partnering with each other to accomplish our vision by living out our mission. The Christian Center exists to transform lives of the love of Christ, and the way we do that is by serving. We get to serve. A lot of times we say, well, I have to go serve. I, no, no, no. I get to serve. I get to give back to Jesus today. I get to serve. The greatest opportunity for seeing lives transformed by the love of Jesus is simply serving people. If you disagree and don't think that's true, then let me ask you, what is the last time somebody served you without you asking anything? They just did something for you out of the kindness, the goodness of their heart, and you were mad at them? Probably never, right? Well, they didn't do it right. Okay, get over it. But what your understanding is, when we serve, when people serve us, our heart is open to be more receptive to who they are and what they got to bring to us when they do it without any expectation of receiving back. When we serve, it's not to get something. When we serve, it's to give Jesus. Lives are transformed when we serve because of Jesus. Matthew 20, 28, Jesus gave the best example. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Son of God, the one that should probably be served the absolute most, made a declaration, I did not come for you to serve me. I came to serve you and to give my life as a ransom. So if Jesus is telling us, I'm not here to be served, but to serve, I think 
his example is one that we should probably all pick up and follow. If Jesus served, I better serve also. Last week, Pastor talked about contagious generosity. And it's not just financial, but it's with our time, it's with our efforts, it's with a lot. Generosity is not just money. So today we're going to continue on our series, I Am a Christian Center, with our next core value, and that's this. Today is your day. Today is your day. In Luke 19, there's a story, an occurrence where Jesus is walking through Jericho. And it's a story of Zacchaeus. If you don't know the story of Zacchaeus, we're going to read it. I know the story of Zacchaeus from Kids Church, right? Because Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was. I heard some of y'all singing with me. All right. Now y'all know why I don't get a microphone on Sundays to sing. Just throw me in the drum case. It's cool. In Luke 19, 1 through 10, we read the story. Jesus said, I, or Jesus entered Jericho, made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass through that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your house today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down to Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. How many times do we get offended like the people did because Jesus speaks life into someone who we don't think deserves his love? I'll keep going. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor Lord, and if I've cheated people in their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, Salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save those who were lost. Zacchaeus heard Jesus was coming by, and he wanted to see him. You notice, like, the Bible doesn't say that Zacchaeus wanted to have an in-depth conversation about theology and and miracles with Jesus. He said, it says he just wanted to see Jesus. He wanted to see him. And here's what I know is there are some of us in this room that we're only here because we want to see. Is Jesus going to be here today? Because I heard Jesus is going to be a Christian sinner, so I'm going to go see, is Jesus really going to be there? And you didn't ask for a conversation about theology. You didn't ask for all the other stuff. You just said, I'm going to go see if Jesus is there. But guess what? He's here. See, Zacchaeus was a tax collector, so by the very nature of his job, he was hated. Well, why did Zacchaeus climb a tree? Well, that's what people do to see. What's the, what's the significance of the tree for Zacchaeus to climb to see Jesus? Zacchaeus was not going to be allowed to get up close because people hated him. Perhaps we need to take a lesson from Zacchaeus and do what it takes to see Jesus, but perhaps we need to be on the other side and say, maybe the person trying to see Jesus, we should let them in instead of pushing them back because we don't feel they're worthy. Zacchaeus cheated everyone. We know he did because he was a tax collector. By nature, that's what he did and who they were. He did everything he could to see Jesus. And in that moment, Jesus walks by and he stops. He stops and he looks at Zacchaeus and calls him by name. He says, let's go. I got to go to your house today. Jesus pretty much said, you're going to feed me lunch today. Let's go. And Zacchaeus didn't say, well, look, I didn't go to the grocery store, um, or I didn't clean the house, it's dirty, I don't, I don't have anything for you. See, we do that a lot. Jesus says, I need you to do this, I want you to do this. Well, Jesus, I would, but my house isn't clean, I, you can't come over, give me 24 hours, let's do lunch tomorrow, I'll make it happen. Zacchaeus said, okay, let's go, and he went. And then he gets there and he says, Lord, notice he changed from Lord, from Jesus to Lord. You're the Lord of my life. If I've cheated anybody, I give them four times as much back. I give it all away. I give it to the poor. I give everything. Why? 
Because when Jesus stops and calls us by name, he changes our heart. When our heart is changed, we begin to change. Some of us in this room can identify with Zacchaeus that we've done some sinful things. We can because we're human. We can also identify with Zacchaeus that when we come to Jesus, he forgives us and we repent and we turn and walk away and he changes us. Why? Because that's what Jesus does. That's who Jesus is. Zacchaeus immediately said, Lord, I'll give back. Four times as much, I'll give it back. If, I, if, if I've cheated them, Lord, I'll give it back. Zacchaeus, why are you saying if? We all know you cheated them. We, everybody knows. So why? But understand, he's repenting of what he's done and saying, I realize I was wrong. I'm giving back what was done, and now I want you to be honored and blessed. I'm giving everything to you, Jesus. See, when we go to Jesus, we turn away from our old ways, and we turn to his ways. And when our heart is touched by Jesus, we say, I'll do whatever you ask me to do. Whatever Jesus you want me to do, I'll do it. And there's an excitement. You see, some of us, I think we've forgotten what Jesus has really done for us because the excitement has left. We just kind of sit on a chair sometimes. I think we need to go back to a moment and ask Jesus, would you remind me exactly what you've done for me? Would you remind me, if you have to, Lord, take me back to a place where I was desperate for you, where I had nothing but you, all my hope was in you. If you didn't come through, I was sunk so that I can be reminded of how good you are, so that I can realize and have that excitement of Jesus, I will do whatever you ask me to do, no matter the cost, because it's all about you. See, a heart touched by God is generous. And a generous heart will serve. Well, why, why do we have to serve? Why, why are we doing, why are we talking about this? I thought today was your day. You're exactly right. We serve because today is someone's day to meet Jesus. We do what we do because today is someone's day to meet Jesus. One of the greatest reasons I've learned to serve besides the fact of, of what Jesus has done for me is because there are days that I have hard times and I don't feel like serving I don't feel like being Jesus with skin on. I don't feel like doing what I'm supposed to do. But when I put myself aside and I say, Jesus, you've done great things for me, I don't feel like it, but I'm going to serve anyways. You know what happens? I've noticed is my spirit begins to change and begins to become joyful, and I begin to change my attitude because I'm serving. I get to do things for someone else. And not only am I blessing them, not only is, is it their day, but guess what? It's also my day for Jesus to change my life once again. Ralph Waldo Emerson said, it's one of the most beautiful truths of this life that no one can sincerely try to help another without also helping himself. When I serve others, I'm in essence also serving myself because I'm allowing Jesus to move through me. Can I tell you something? When he moves through me, he sticks. When we say today is your day, for some of us in this room, today is your day to meet Jesus. Jesus. There are some of you in this room that you've pushed, you've held back, you've pushed it, you've, you've just kind of ignored, you've kind of done whatever. You've, you've played the game like Pastor talked about earlier, but today is your day to give your life to Jesus. Well, why? Because it's your day. I can't give you a definition, but I can tell you that Jesus said today is your day. There are some of you in this room that today is the day of salvation for your marriage because it's on the rocks, it's falling apart, there are struggles, there are, there are battles you're facing. I don't know what else to do. Today is the day that Jesus says, I want to heal what you think is destroyed. I want to heal what you think is torn apart. For some of you today, this is the day of salvation for your healing. For some of you, it's your finances. Well, Pastor, you just don't, I don't understand. You're right. You know why? Because I don't know all the intricate details of your life, but what I do know is Jesus does. And when he says today is your day, friend, it is your day. Well, not if I say no, you're right, and you're the one going to be sad and missing out and regret that you would said no to Jesus. But can I tell you something? He will still chase after you. We must understand and remember that every Sunday is someone's day. Every Wednesday night is someone's day. But check this out. We are Christian sinners, right? All five of us. We are Christian sinner. If we are Christian sinner, that means we are the church. We are the body of Christ. So guess what? When you go to work tomorrow, guess what day it is? Someone's day. When you go to work on Thursday, guess what day it is? 
It's someone's day. Why? Because everywhere I go, I represent Jesus. And if I represent Jesus, it's someone's day for healing, someone's day for salvation, someone's day for a miracle. But I don't have everything. I may not, but Jesus does. And when I represent Jesus, I have to represent Jesus. Can I tell you something? Your serving matters. Everything you do matters. We have three little girls currently going through our kids' program every Sunday, every Wednesday, even down to the baby. There are a lot of you that serve, and I want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Because your serving is changing my girls' lives because you're being Jesus with skin onto those girls. And there are some families in our church that guess what? Because you served, there are other families that those little girls took Jesus that they were taught to school and began to tell their friends. And guess what? Their friends came to church and come to church and are coming to church because you served. Well, it's just nursery. No, 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 no. It's nursery. Well, it's just kids' church. Oh, no, my friend. It is you speaking life and truth into some kids that need Jesus. And can I tell you something? You may not hear it. They may never, you may never see it, but those kids are taking Jesus home. They're taking Jesus to school. So when you serve, it matters. I don't have time to list every area, but when you serve, everything you do matters. Why? Because today, in your serving, it's someone's day. It's someone's day. My friend and mentor, Jeannie Mayo, says this. She says, life is a game of, like a game of tennis. The player who serves well seldom loses. When we serve, we must serve well for Jesus. We just sing a song, I'm available. And can I just caution you, be, be careful when you sing that song because when you say the words and you prepare your heart and you say, I'm available, guess what Jesus does? Okay, I'm going to use you. Why? Because today is someone's day. One of my favorite guys, one of my favorite people in the Bible to just kind of read about and study on is Peter. Peter was a dude that loved Jesus with all his heart. He followed Jesus. Peter was like me as knucklehead sometimes too. Peter, when Jesus was crucified, denied knowing Jesus three times. He denied him. A lot of times when we get put in a tight spot at work or at home or at Walmart, we tend to deny Jesus because it's much easier to just say and do what I want to do. Can I tell you, I'm just as guilty as anybody. Peter denied Jesus three times, but yet before that day, Jesus spoke to Peter in Matthew 16, 18. He says, now I say to, I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church and the powers of hell will not conquer it. Can I tell you that just as Jesus spoke to Peter, he will speak to us if you, as you, go out and you be my people, I will use you to build my church. And the power of hell cannot stand against the word of God or his power and his authority. So as I go out as his church, as his body, as I go out as Christian sinner, guess what I'm doing? I'm going out as Jesus. And what I go do, what I speak in his name, hell can't win. See, today is your day. Say it with me. Today is my day. Well, Pastor, I don't need salvation. I already know Jesus. I need salvation every day. But can I tell you something? I realize that there are some of us in this room, like I said a while ago, today may not be your day of salvation because you know Jesus, but today may be the day of salvation for your marriage, for your finances, for your job, for your friends, for your family. Today is the day that Jesus ordained and anointed that you would be here in his presence because he said, I want to give you more of me. Will you take it? Everything we do at Christian Center points to Sunday. Everything we do on Wednesdays points to Sunday. Everything we do on Thursdays. Pastor gave you several illustrations last week of how we serve in the community as a church. Can I tell you the way that we serve in our community points to Sundays? Well, why? You hear Pastor it all the time. On Wednesday nights, we do youth and kids ministry well. And adult care is provided. Why? Because statistics say if you can reach a child, you can reach a family. 
And so when we focus on Wednesday on kids and youth, you know what we're doing? We're focusing on Sunday because if we can reach students and kids, guess what happens? The kids come in, they bring their family, and then on Sunday, guess what happens? The family comes to Jesus. What about all the other stuff? Oh, yeah, we're planting seeds, and we serve every other, every other day of the week. When, we, when I go everywhere and I realize that today is somebody's day to know about Jesus, guess what I'm doing? I'm pointing to Sunday. Hey, you can meet Jesus today on Thursday or on Friday or on Wednesday or on Tuesday, but can I tell you something? You need to be on Sunday so you understand that here as a family that Jesus loves you and has a plan for you. Well, you don't understand my life's just torn apart. Maybe so. Can I tell you something? I've been there sometimes too, and now what I know is the only person I know that can put it back together is Jesus. And today is your day. To say, I won't serve, I refuse to serve, or I'm not qualified, or I don't know how to serve, is a selfish statement. Because what I know for a fact is that when Jesus changed my heart, and as he daily changes my heart, I can't stop serving. I can't stop wanting to serve, because all I want to do is give back for what he's done. See, there are two guys in the Bible that we talked to, we've talked about, and one of them is the rich young, rich young ruler who came to Jesus and said, good, good teacher, what do I have to do to, to inherit heaven? What do I have to do to go to heaven? I want to be your servant. Jesus said, follow the Ten Commandments. Oh, I've done that. He said, okay, then go sell all you have and give to the poor and then come follow me. The Bible says he walked away sad. He was more concerned about his possessions, his selfish pride, than doing what Jesus asked him to do. And then you have Judas, who Jesus called as a disciple, knowing good and well what he was going to do with the hopes that he might have a heart change. And yet Judas was so concerned with money that he focused on that rather than on the fact that he was with Jesus. You see, perhaps we would focus on the fact that we are with Jesus every single day and that today is not only your day, but it's my day as well. Perhaps our lives would be altered a little bit and I'm not just talking about like that we would reflect him, but perhaps we'd have more joy and that we would, we would really understand what he's given us. And we'd be excited to share Jesus, even to the lady in front of us in the checkout stand at Walmart for self-checkout. He's got a basket full of stuff. We've got two things. Right? That's real, though, because we get there and as we see that, what do we do? We start grumbling. This lady goes, like, the 15 item or less. So you got a basket. Come on. Lady. Like, I'm in a hurry. You know what I love, though? Everywhere Jesus went, he was never in a hurry. But he went with intention. You notice he was walking through Jericho, and then what did he do? He stopped and spoke to Zacchaeus. There's another occurrence where Jesus is on his way to heal a little girl, and he stops and heals someone else with intention, and then he carries on to go where he's supposed to go. Because he was intent everywhere he went to be sure that the will of God was done first and foremost. Why? Because today is your day. Today is someone's day. In Acts chapter 6, there's an occurrence where the disciples are meeting together and they realize, hey, we're getting bombarded with all these questions and all this stuff, and we can't do it all by ourselves anymore. Let's read it real quick. It says this, But as the believers rapidly multiplied, the church was growing like crazy. There were rumblings of discontent. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers, saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. So the 12 called a meeting of all the believers. They said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. And so, brothers, select seven men who are all well-respected and are full of the spirit and wisdom. We will give them this responsibility. Then we apostles can spend our time in prayer and Teaching the word. Everyone liked this idea, and they chose the following. Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit. Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Permenus, and Nicholas of Antioch. These seven were presented to the apostles who prayed for them as they laid their hands on them. So God's message continued to spread. The number of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem, and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. They said, we can't do it by ourselves. we got to have help. Give us some help. You get to serve too. And I love the end of that scripture. Do you, do you catch that? And the number of believers greatly increased after they divided it up and said, 
we're a team. Your service matters. Your serving matters because today is somebody's day to meet Jesus and one, two, three, four people can't do it by themselves. It takes all of us. But when we serve, it's someone's day to meet Jesus. On the other side of your serve is a soul that needs to know about Jesus. You know what I think the disciples realized? Hey, if we keep doing everything ourselves, we're going to miss some souls that need to know about Jesus. So if we don't begin to make a bigger team and begin to spread out and divvy out things, guess what's going to happen? They're going to be missed. And Jesus doesn't want anyone to be missed. That's why he was, when he went somewhere, he went somewhere with a purpose. He was intent and he was focused. Did he get distracted? No, no, no. He stopped because you need, I need to have an intentional moment with you. I need to stop and have an intentional moment with you. I'm going somewhere and I'm going to get there when I get there, but I'm not going to be in a hurry and miss what God has for someone else. See, everything Jesus did was a purpose. I must go to Samaria. Why? Nothing good's over there. I must go because there's someone I must have a moment with because it's her day. I must go. Zacchaeus, come down. I'm going to your house today. There are some of you in this room that Jesus is saying, Zacchaeus, come down. I need to go to your house today. He's calling you by name. I need to go to your house today. I'm going to your house today. Are you going with me or are you, am I going by myself? See, we're all responsible for our part in making today's day. Let me rephrase it. I confuse myself. We're all responsible in doing our part for someone's today. We're all responsible. Because you know what I learned? If you don't do your part and I do my part, there's a hiccup. If I don't do my part and you do your part, there's a hiccup. It's all of our responsibility to do our part because today is someone's day. There are some of us in this room that today is your day for salvation in your marriage, for in your, in your finances, in your job, in, in your personal life with Jesus, that's your day. How do you know that? Because I also read in 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and 2, it says, as God's partners, we beg you not to accept this marvelous gift of God's kindness and then ignore it. For God says at just the right time, I heard you. Indeed, the right time is now. Today is the day of salvation. Today is your day of salvation to meet Jesus for the first time. Today is someone's day to begin serving. Today is someone's day to begin giving. Well, I already give. Then today it may be your day where Jesus says, I need you to increase. Not because I need your money, but because I need your money to not have you. Today is your day to give your hurts and your regrets to Jesus. Today is someone's day to let go of unforgiveness and bitterness. Today is someone's day to let go of regret and doubt. Can I tell you, today is not just someone's day. It's my day. It's not just someone's day. It's your day. Today is your day. Why do we serve? Because today is someone's day and the other side of my serve, the other side of my yes, is a soul to be changed by Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for today. God, I thank you that today is my day. I know I'm up here on the stage. I'm up here preaching. I'm giving the word that you put on my heart, but today is my day for you to change my life. Today is the day for every person that's building for you to change our lives. We all are going through different situations and scenarios. But today is our day to give those to you and allow you to do what needs to be done. So Lord, I pray that today we would begin to make the choice in our heart and in our mind that Jesus, today is my day. Today is my day. If it's not my day, then it's my neighbor's day and I want to make sure that they have the opportunity. But Lord, I believe that today is my day too for you to do something great. 
And so today, help us to make the decision. It's my day, and I want you to do what needs to be done in my life because you're the only one that can, Jesus. Lord, for every person in this room that today is their day of salvation, it's their day to give their life to you, to commit their life, that you'd be the Lord and Savior of their world. Or would you have, would you get on the boldness to make that decision? Or for those of us today that maybe it's a marriage or finances or jobs, the list could go on, but today is our day that you begin a healing work in our lives. Today is a day that you begin to bring healing. Would you begin to move that we would make the decision to say, yes, Lord, I give it to you. It's yours. Because today is my day. You've established this day for a reason and a purpose, and I give it back to you because I want you to be glorified. Lord, thank you for what you have and what you've done and what you're going to do. Thank you for watching and worshiping with us today. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a video or a live stream. And please share this video with your friends and family. If this message has encouraged you today, please let us know in the comments as we would love to connect with you. And thank you so much for your generosity. Because of you and your faithful giving, together we share the gospel around the world. So please visit our website, crumbcc.church, and use the giving link. God bless you. We can't wait to worship with you again next week.